And it seems like every few months or so, this ugly debate resurfaces. And this time in a duo of competing editorials, the Washington Post editorial board, which is largely male, and Amanda Marcotte over at Salon, bickered over whether or not politics should be a factor in your dating life. Now, the latest iteration of this fight began when the Washington Post editorial board on November 22nd published a piece called, if attitudes don't shift, a political dating mismatch will threaten marriage. That sounds horrifying. And in it, they lament young conservative men's struggles finding love and finding relationships. But they seem to blame women becoming more liberal as if this just happened in a vacuum and isn't a reaction to conservative governance. They write, according to a major new American Enterprise Institute survey, 46% of white Gen Z women are liberal compared to only 28% of white Gen Z men, more of whom 36% now identify as conservative. Norms around sexuality and gender are diverging too, whereas 61% of Gen Z women see themselves as feminist. Only 43% of Gen Z men do. It is little surprise that the manfluencers, particularly those such as British American kickboxer Andrew Tate, who promote outright misogyny, have their biggest following among boys and young men. And there's more to it. But it's really nothing new. It's just another regurgitation of the same arguments that you shouldn't hold someone's political views against them. You should just date them anyway. But then Amanda Marcotte fired back in Salon. It's an amusing truth that comes up with regularity. Men who love Donald Trump struggle on the dating market. This is neither surprising nor regrettable. Supporting Trump is much like refusing to bathe, blowing your nose in your hands or farting loudly on purpose. It's a repugnant habit that makes you repulsive to normal people. The whole point of dating and marriage is to find happiness, not to spend the rest of one's days suffering in silence while the racist you live with cackles over Craig Gutfeld's latest hateful diatribe disguised as comedy. She continues, the op-ed presents this entreaty to date across party lines as if it's generalized advice being offered to both men and women both Republicans and Democrats. But of course, it's aimed primarily, if not exclusively, at Democratic voting women. The polling data shows that most Republicans are already willing to date Democrats, which makes sense since Democrats make more attractive partners. It's mostly Democrats and mostly women who decline to date those from the other party. It's funny, you could make of that what you will, but to really take this debate to the next level, Outnumbered on Fox News offered this insight. For all those women, um, who don't want to date Trump supporters, not applying to you. Um, I feel sorry for them. Um, they're going to date uh, and maybe ultimately marry a bunch of beta guys who won't you know, want to split the check, won't open the door, um, won't protect them. Um, I think that uh, you know, this idea that Trump voters are somehow repugnant is repugnant um, to say that. These are great men. Many of them are the ones that are keeping this country running um, and, and, and putting food on the table. And they're farmers and they're factory workers and they're, and they're soldiers. And so I don't like that, but I do agree that politics matters only because politics reflects values. Okay, I, I, I'm so curious what both of you think. When you were dating, if you are dating, are you dating across party lines? And if not, why do you hate the troops? <laughs> okay, so there's so much I love in this. And and I did date across party lines. I'll tell you more about that in a sec. First of all, she's like, they're farmers and soldiers and Native Americans and leathermen. Wait, no, that's the YMCA. Um uh so I like I love these stereotypes they have in their heads, like, oh, they're all the macho men, yeah. <laughs> and then oh, the Democrats are the beta males. And then they're like, I don't know why they're offended by us. Gee, I wonder why. Uh, okay, so do like I, I'm amused that they're offended by it. We're just not that into you. So like, what do you want us? Like, do you want us to force us to like you? Look here, I'll give you an example. So I'm Muslim born. Trump said in 2016, and he repeated it again recently that we should ban all Muslims from the country. Am I supposed to like that? <laughs> so if like a woman is 
says, oh, I'd like to date you. But at the same time, I'd like to ban you from the country. Like, I don't know, make up your mind. But you'll excuse me if I'm not like rushing out to date you or marry you. I mean, how are we supposed to get along? You don't even think I should be in the country. Like, so it's such an, they don't realize what an unreasonable request it is. They're like, no, I should get to hate you and date you. No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. So now look, when I was younger, to be fair and honest, did I date across party lines? Yes. Uh, but uh, was it because I was planning on a long term relationship with those folks? Maybe not. Am I the bad guy? Could be. Okay. But, uh, but is that what a beta would do? Not exactly. Okay. But I do remember once going out with a woman who said, I don't get it. You say you're Muslim, but you don't have a beer. And I was like, all right, let's talk about it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bad man. All right, go ahead, Ray. Drake was lying to the ladies. Cancel him, everybody. Cancel him. Cancel <laughs> no, him. I didn't lie. I, hey, I said, look, I'm Muslim born. I'm all good with it. If you're good with it, and then we'll talk about it later on why I don't have a beard. Um, I okay. First of all, I want to point out that the Washington Post cites stats that talk about um, the uh, political alignings of just white Gen Zers, which I guess you know, anti-miscegenation WAPO <laughs> editorial board. Um, I'm just kidding. Obviously, I don't actually think that, but um, I don't. I would never be with someone who uh, well, fundamentally, I don't think that women who value their right to choose should ever be with someone who doesn't. I can't imagine anyone wanting to spend, you know, the rest of their lives with someone who views them as a second class citizen or less than uh, who doesn't want them to have the full rights of a citizen. I mean, you know, things Andrew Tate says things and they mentioned him in the article, but Andrew Tate says things like women shouldn't be able to vote. Like they shouldn't have jobs that they, uh, and I also, I'm sorry, I keep going back, but they call him British American kickboxer Andrew Tate and not uh, man on house arrest for sex trafficking charges, Andrew Tate. I found it a fascinating way to describe him in that uh, in that article. Um, I liked the response from Amanda Marconi. It made me laugh. And I mean, I don't know, in my personal life, you know, my partner and I have been together four years. We, I swiped right on their Tinder because their bio said Hunter Biden's best friend. And that gave me the inclination that we might have the same politics. And we spent our first few dates bonding over the fact that we both listen to the same political podcast, mostly Chapo Trap House. Uh, and it's worked ever since. And I really can't imagine myself ever being with someone who didn't share my politics. But reading this this uh, article, it just felt whiny. Like, ugh, why don't these Gen Z women want to sleep with people that don't respect them? It's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> That's how the whole thing read to me. It was just so, so whiny, so moany, and I hated it. I hated the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. just want to say uh, one thing about what Ray just said, because it's such a good point. It's such a weird sense of entitlement to think like, well, even though I say things that are hateful about you, I am entitled to sleep with you anyway. Right. On which planet? Why? That's such a weird expectation. And 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 Ray, I thought you were going to say that you guys bonded, you and your partner, because you're both Ukrainian gas experts. And you're like, oh, <laughs> finally, someone else who's a fan of Hunter Biden. <laughs> the, the, this whole debate, especially the the, the conservative sympathetic side, it just treats politics as some abstraction in people's lives. And they kind of talked about how politics informs your values. I would argue that they are your values in, in to some extent. But they act like the things that you support, the things you advocate for, the things you take action to enact or try to enact, they are, they talk about these things as if they exist in a silo and that there are no repercussions. And it shows a level of comfort for the Washington Post editorial board, a total level of detachment for the hosts of Outnumbered. But it's no surprise to me or to you and I assume many of the viewers when liberal women don't want to date conservative men. 
I, I can't believe that this just keeps coming up. This isn't the first time I've seen a column, a piece, a segment about this. It's been going on even like decades, and they just can't seem to wrap their heads around the idea that, hey, when you advocate for things that make people's lives worse, fewer people are going to want to interact with you. Yeah, I, I think it would have been more interesting if they wrote an article about uh, uh, the shame of, of women who have a conservative sneaky link, a Trump voting sneaky link. <laughs> And what happens to them when their prayers are not answered and the friend group finds out about that. <laughs> Thanks for watching the video, guys. We also love it if you hit the join button below because that makes you a member. And members allow us to be independent, honest. We could be as progressive as we want, no corporate media influence. And that's all because of you guys. We love doing the show with our members. Hit the join button, become one of the Young Turks.